thank you Jesus in Jesus mighty name we have prayed dear most High father we thank you thank you you are a great God faithful you are thank you for always preparing us making ready us to hear your word this morning speak your word to us make it come clear oh lord let it be applicable unto us in the name of jesus be thou exalted be thou glorified jesus mighty name we have prayed now there's somebody under the sound of my voice you have a kind of stomach upset since last night there's a kind of any, any kind of obstruction in your stomach i command you healed i say you are healed we check it now the thing has gone hallelujah lord thank you father anyone under the sound of my voice have you one ailment or the other i command you healed in the name of jesus in the name of jesus every affliction is gone every imprisonment is arrested every witchcraft spell is returned to sender in the name of the lord jesus lord almighty cause every one of us to have the evidence of your presence here and make known your glory in such a life blessed be your name lord jesus mighty name we have prayed let the church say amen let's put our hands together for jesus as of our sit in god's presence amen hallelujah this morning we're going to consider the topic royal priest royal priest shall we please turn our bibles to daniel chapter 1 verse 3 to 4 then verse 8 then you'll read 19 to 20 all right i read and the king spake unto Aspinas, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes. Verse 4 says, And the children, a whom was no blemish, but were favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding standing signs and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. Verse 8 says, but Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defy himself with a portion of the king's meat nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might 19. He says, and the king communed with them and among them all was found none like Daniel and Ananiah, Messiah and Azaria. Therefore stood they before the, the king. 20 says, and of wisdom understanding that the king requested Acquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. May the Lord bless his words and make it rich unto our lives in the name of Jesus. The, and the, I call it royal priest. Now, we are talking under the theme of manifesting his glory, manifesting God's glory. And in this place, we have been told something about someone, a group of people that have a royal touch to their lives. And they were, it was very specific that Aspinas should get children from Israel, from Judah, and they should be of the king's seed. It's 
the children in whom there is no blemish, but well favor and skillful in all wisdom and cunning knowledge, understanding signs, and such had ability to stand in the king's palace so that they could expose them to the strength of what will make them fixed in their kingdom. Amen. Now, if you look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, it said, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Royal priest, what do I mean? Like what this place Bro Peter has said, that we, we are a royal priesthood. What does this one mean in this context of manifesting his glory? It means we have a life and we live that life for God's glory. How? Peter understood this strength. In Luke chapter 5, we are told that Jesus used his boats to minister the gospel. Afterward, Peter, though he walked out through the night, he couldn't catch anything. But Jesus, after the preaching and every other thing, he told him to launch into the right deep side. And he caught the Lord. And he looked at Jesus. Oh, I'm not worthy to be around you. Jesus said, well, before now you have been catching fish. But now from today, you'll be catching men. You'll be catching men. You'll be catching men. And right from that time, the peculiarity of Peter came out. He now discovered that he was not just ordained to catch fish, but he was ordained by God as his royal priest. Amen. He was ordained by God as his royal priest. So if Jesus called him, he took living for the glory of God. Before you were living for yourself, fishing, but now live your life for God's glory. And if you live your life for God's glory, for God's purpose, and you remain faithful in this, you know, irrespective of the times and the season, irrespective of the adversity, irrespective of the challenges, you when you live to remain in this faithfully in the purpose of God then you will live out your life in fulfillment of God's purpose. So Daniel understood this. He has been trained as a king seed. And he has been made to understand living the flesh and living worldly is not a signal of a priesthood. So, a priesthood is someone who lives consecrated unto God and ready for the master's use. And he has been consecrated, he has been tailored in that strength. So, when he got to Babylon, he never knew that God, by reason of election and selection, that he would be selected to be consecrated. And when he had the opportunity to be consecrated unto the king to appear before the kings uh, the, to, to interpret things and to, to come before the king's palace. He had everything that it takes in human things to make happen what the king required. But when the time came, Daniel, he took the decision, I will not eat anything that would define me, that will make me not to become the priest I am ordained to be. I can't afford to live my life in the world and for the world and still think how oh, I'm a priest, a royal priest. No, anyhow. A royal priest does not just talk anyhow. A royal priest does not just live his life anyhow. He live having royalty and living in the consciousness of the glory he has been ordained to represent. So, so you are choosing people, a royal priesthood, 
a holy nation, God's special possession. Tell somebody, I'm God's special possession. Amen. Make it louder. Amen. Amen. I'm God's special. I'm a royal priest. You know what? When you the day you know the reality that exists in you. The day you know the divinity that exists in you. The day you know the glory of the Almighty that is a strength you maintain and you have. From that day, you will separate yourself. You will live the life that will exude that glory. For instance, the day Joseph had a dream, a new his life is not just ordinary. It's a living difference. Because the hand of God was upon him. The day Peter knew what he had been called to do, that his expertise is no fish, his expertise is ordained of God to reach out to men, to stand, to be a priest between God and man. He lived totally outside the former to make himself zero in into the reality he will be ordained. How do you see your life now? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So a believer having believed Jesus, you have been given the power of sonship. The power to become a son and a daughter to serve as a mediator between God and the world, representing God's kingdom and glory. From today, that will be our manifestation. I didn't hear your amen. Now, if you look at this trend, you discover that Daniel's life demonstrated it the moment. He got to the land. He didn't hide it. Hence, he was selected. Hence, he was picked. If those characteristics, if that life is not there, there is no way it would have been a signal of that grace. So, Daniel, we are told he lived a life or reality. That was his life. So when he was called to take another life, he quickly saw it and took the decision to take that risk to remain the royal priest he had been ordained to represent. To remain in the divinity of his grace. Amen. Now, when there's something I learned from Exodus chapter 19, verse 6. Exodus chapter 19, verse 6. It says, You will be a treasure. It said, it said, and you shall be unto me. Let's read together. And it shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto children. Hi. Test somebody. I am. A treasure possession. A kingdom of priests. A holy nation. So, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, they have this definition of their identity. And they saw it. They are their treasure. The things of this world won't be a means to define them. The things of the flesh will not be a means to define them. But let the glory of God, the treasure they represent, let it become the same. The, the, the things people will say to define their lives. So Daniel choose that reality. And number two, we, are, we, we saw, having been chosen by God to play the role of a priest, Number two, he was set aside to be holy and set apart for that glory. 
set aside to be holy, set aside for the glory of being a royal priest. Amen. And we also saw that it became, it, it, it was set apart. If a, a royal priest is someone who is a mediator between God and the world. What does that mean? If you look at Daniel chapter 2, verse 18 to 22, you saw when the king could not interpret dreams and could not remember the dreams. It took Daniel and the three Hebrews men to engage their royalty. Their priesthood strength and role came to bear and defined, they told the dream and they interpreted the dream. So, anywhere you find yourself, may you become the representative of that strength, of that priesthood in your department, in your business, in your workplace, in everything you do in life, you become a definition of the divinity in the name of the Lord Jesus. You become a representative of God's kingdom. You become a, a strength of God to demonstrate his glory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, what are the characters? Let me just quickly rush there that make Daniel to become to be described as the one that carry unusual strength that is a representation of priest number one he was a man that was filled, was faithful to the priesthood he represented now when the choice came to eat out of the king's mint and drink the priest to the him saw the emptiness of the food from the king's table and of the drink he decided to remain faithful to the priesthood he wouldn't mind to suffer anything in the flesh and in the world to prove and to bring out the act of his faith, his faith in God to find expression. So the first thing characteristics, it demonstrated a man that has faith, a man that lives for life, a man that lives for faith, a man that have understanding that his life is not defined by the flesh, by the world, by satanic forces, by the strengths around men, by the adversities around, by defined by the God he believes in. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So he was defined in that and hence he lived his life for God's glory faithfully live his life for God's glory and that thing we could see here is Daniel was faithful he lived his life for God's glory but he, he served with humility he served not having bearing not bringing flesh to rule he served depending on God and directing from God to know how to apply the strength he carried. Amen. The strength we carry, except we tap into the spirit, except we allow the spirit to find expression, you can't bring out the treasure you represent. No. What happened to Joseph? What happened to Mordecai? The treasure they carry, which is the spirit of God, where their dependence, where, where, where they are mixed, the seat of power that we are walking and relating from and serving from. Not just head. Not just what we make will be good. We make people feel good. Not just what makes people to think they are now big, they are now increasing faith. But the things the Lord wanted, that is what they have become to represent. And that strength became the strength of reality. They now exhibited and choose to live with. Amen. Amen. They were faithful. He served with all humility and he lived his life for God and the next one he became the represented he represented the supernatural 
He represented the glory of God. He represented the glory of God fully demonstrated. He represented the glory of God fully demonstrated. You can see that in that chapter 1 verse 20 to, 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 to 19 to 20. You saw the way he demonstrated before the king and the king could not see anybody like him. When the king needed to hear the dream and interpretation, he came challenging the king. Why are you in a hurry? I will do this, but by tomorrow I will settle on this. Ah, what kind of audacity? Supernatural. It, the things that were not possible, he said it is possible. Why? He knows the priesthood is due to represent when life comes challenging. What are you doing with the priesthood you represent? You are there to put a stop, to put a challenge, to put a control, to put a limitation that, be, that they belong to, to put a stop to their activities. They are not the power to carry a power. A priest does not look at situation and be hopeless. A priest look at a situation and relate with it from the God is out. For the God he represents. For the God that he stands to be a priest for. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. He was a representation of God. Amen. And he demonstrated that wisdom. Exceptional wisdom. He interpreted the dreams. He taught the dreams. Great insight. Friend, the day you know that Daniel didn't orchestrate anything, that this thing exists there, there's a spirit that grants inspiration, there's a spirit that guides us, there's a voice of God, there's the eyes of God, there's the organs of God, a control that makes us a treasure possession of God. And if we can release ourselves to it, friend, you could see, you will see it as Daniel saw it, we will see it. When in Acts chapter 3, when Joseph, when Peter and John released themselves to this beauty of the inner strength, the inner strength became more real than the physical. I declare from today, you will live that life. You will be a priest, a royal priest. That's what happened. Peter and John said, Silver and gold, <laughs> what I have, do you know what you have? The day you know, from there you walk in that power. From there you walk in that reality. When Peter told Jesus, hey, no, I tore all night. Jesus said, just do this. And okay, at your wall, he threw the night, the night caught fishes, that the night had a lot of catch. Like it was breaking out the back on our people. Friend, the day you start acting from the supernatural you belong, from the priesthood experience, understanding you have and life you have, you see that this life is sweet. Am I speaking, church? Amen. Another characteristic we will see in this man, Daniel, he recognized God's sovereignty in his life. Nothing about himself. Tend to carry weight. Tend to prevail, then to mm, lure him to at activities. Before he goes doing anything, he will hear, Lord, what do I do? Lord, how do I go about this? Oh, what are you saying? And every word that God speaks becomes his commitment, no matter the adversity. When in Daniel chapter 6, he went praying, and he prayed and he prayed, and afterward he was caught, and he was released to the den, to the lions in the den, their den, having been starved. Daniel was not moved. Friend, the priest who represented became the display of God's presence that, that electrocuted the mouth of the lion and the lion cooperated with God and they provided him enough comfort and peace and he was able to secure his, I mean, God secured him and the God himself continually prevented the lion from eating Daniel and when the money come, came, the king, the king said, the God you serve continually. So a priest is someone that serves God continually. So that characteristic must be seen daily, deliberately, must be demonstrated in everything about your life. 
Tell somebody I'm a royal priest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we also saw the life of Daniel. That Daniel was very prayerful. If you look at second, I mean, uh, the second chapter of Daniel, I think verse 18 or so. Second, second, Daniel chapter 2, verse 17 and 18. He said, Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known by, to Ananiah, Messiah, and Azariah, his companion. Verse 18, that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. That was a secret revealed unto then secret. Then was a secret revealed unto Daniel in a, in a ninth vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Am I speaking church? Do you know what? When Peter and John were dead with they knew the power of God in oppression. They prisoned them even when they were put in a physical prison and the people that did that went to take a decision their counsel that they want to bring them out to warn them. But they should not preach on that name. Somebody told them, friend, the person you are thinking and talking about that you want to bring to chastise or to harass, they are not in the prison. They are there preaching. Hi! Oh! May the priest in us not settle for the less. I want to hear amen. amen. That when you see advance, adversity, it will I mean, it, it will is it ginger now? It will ignite. It will make for the fire for the priest who you represent to come to a strength of a green land light. Why? That priest will be provoked and you will now stand in between yourself and God and cry unto the Lord. The Lord that have called you his representation will now respond to you because you are his priest. Am I speaking? <laughs> Amen. Uh, when he's responding to you, he will respond to you as to a royal priesthood. As a one that is royal. As a king. As a owner, as the control of that dominion. As the one that determines what happens. Ask anything in my name. I will give it unto you. Hi. Amen. So from today, don't ask as if you are not a priest. Of course, I am a royal priesthood. You are a royal priest. Tell, tell yourself, I'm a royal priest. So, any other priest, they are fake. Am I speaking? Amen. Hallelujah. Then, another character I could see in Daniel is that Daniel was courageous for his faith. It, it didn't succumb to any other when he was told no man should call upon God or ask for any help from any man or God outside the king the priest royal priest he belong choose to do this is challenging my office challenging my domain my domain must bring. And it came out of his fears. The flesh, the fears from the flesh did not limit him. The worldly decree did not stop him. He was audacious enough to confront those things to let them know, I know where they belong. Do you know what? That's what Jesus was telling Peter. Catch the, throw the night to the right side. And Peter initially was reasoning from his head. But later he now said, at your word, friend, you are a priest. A priest wells does not fall to the ground of fulfilled. Am I speaking? From today, as you live that life, you will see your life manifesting that glory in the name of Jesus. 
In the name of Jesus. Now, what are the biblical principles that guide this strength of life? Number one. Let's read John chapter 18, verse 37. John chapter 18, verse 37. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou seest that I am a king. To this end was I born. For this cause came I into the world that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth hearing my words. Friend, know your identity. Know what you have priest over. Know your royalty. Know your identity. A priest will speak like the king. His words does not fall, will not fall to the ground of faith. So the principle is know the kind of person you are in Christ. Know your position in Christ. Amen. Amen. Now, the day Peter started relating with the strength of reality, he started operating the supernatural. So you must know it to have it. Am I speaking? You must know what your priesthood is designed to represent and to demonstrate. Amen. So know the purpose, the purpose for which you were born. How? Joseph knew he was committed ruthlessly. Daniel knew he was committed ruthlessly. Mordecai knew he was committed ruthlessly. Irrespective of all that were advances to make them to chicken out of that strength, they refused because they know the purpose of God has been assigned for them to accomplish. So they will live this life. As long as I'm along the root of my purpose, I will not die the natural death. I will not die like others. No one can kill. What do I mean? If not that Daniel's life was tied around purpose, there is no way he would have got into the palace. If not that David's life was tied around a purpose of which God had ordained. There is no way David would have escaped lion and bear. No, you talk of Goliath. What happened to Moses when Moses was to be born? If the prophecy was not upon the life of Moses, there is no way that decree would have consumed Moses. There's no way he would have been hidden for three months and be thrown into the sea. And the, the princess came around to take a bath. What a costly orchestration by the divine. So when your life is working in the principle of divinity, ah, the natural cannot have any say to limit you. So you have to know the purpose you have been to, I mean, born to represent. Am I speaking? When Isaac was told by God, remain in this land, I will. He remain and he prosper. When he God, when Daniel got there and they said, they, they, they told Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that uh, you have to bow down to the image of the king and to the idol of the king. In Daniel chapter 2, they now said, well, we will not do this. While they were doing it to their contemporaries, their friends, they went to report them and let, they wanted to see what their ways will be. And when they reported, then they called them to the to the manquest court to the king's palace, where everyone were waiting and looking at them. And the king said, Let me give you this benefit of a doubt. Now, if the, if this thing happened, then we will throw you into the light, into the fire furnace. They told him, no king, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. The king was grieved. He increased the fearfulness seven times. 
increasing. They were not moved. Ah, the day you know the authority you carry, the priesthood that is your in existence in your life, from that day you won't be moved by any bagger. Am I speaking? We need it today. We need it today. They that do know their God, they shall be strong and they will do exploit. The righteous is as bold as the lion. No matter what they know, what they do, I don't care. All I know, I remain a royal priest and I will be there. Hallelujah. Amen. But are you aware of your priesthood? Are you aware that you speak a thing and nobody can question it? As, as you are aware that when you stand to say this is what is going to happen, nothing will alter it. Are you aware? Let Hamas muscle everything against it. It won't alter it. Let this, the signal of the king be put and be used in the lion's den. It won't alter what God has said. It's too faithful to fail. You are God's representation. Live that life. Your business will not fail. In your academies will not be a failure. I said you will not be a failure. The favor of God will distinguish you and single you out for glory. I'm singled out for glory. Another principle is like on Thursday we talked about God's battle as. Now a battle as is not in itself strong but the content the one behind the battle ass determines the strength of the battle ass am i speaking so number two principle is you must be equipped for every good work when you look at what daniel did daniel decided to take away the food and the the, the things that will not make him to be equipped you must be equipped for every good work. Let somebody be equipped for every good work. Now, if you look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 17, I would have loved to read for chapter, Daniel chapter 1, 18 to 20, but no time. But that what that place saying, Daniel was equipped by taking away the food and the drinks and he lived the life of royalty. And when he lived that life, before the king, there was nothing that he could not handle. So, naturally, he was just there. So, I read, said that the man of God may be perfect. If you look at verse 16, verse 16, let's read it. Verse 16 of that same chapter. He said, all scripture, let's read together. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Let's say instruction in righteousness. Look at what Daniel did. He took off the things that would defile him and he hold on tight to the things that will make him to be fit as a priest, a royal priest. Am I speaking? And verse 7, he said that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And in verse 28, verse, uh, chapter 1 of Daniel, verse 18 to 20, let's quickly read it. Daniel chapter 1, verse 18 to 20. Halaba shatay halaba le morando say say now at the end of the days hi amen that the king had said he should bring them in then the priest of the eunuch brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar verse nineteen says and the king communed with them and among them was was all among them all was found not like Daniel Ananiah Messiah Azariah therefore stood there before the king 20 the last and all in let's read together and in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them he found them 10 times better than all the magicians and that were now when you look at the strength of God's word the strength of your priesthood is the much of the measure of the word of God you eat daily. 
And when you are equipped with God's word, you are equipped with God's wisdom. When you are equipped with God's word, you are loaded with God's word, you are loaded with God's nature and personality. Am I speaking, church? So the second principle is you must be equipped by God's word, by his glory, by his strength, by his life, by his activities. No one had known it all. Hence, we go to the word of God daily to know where to correct in our lives. To know where to straighten. To know how to straighten the crooked path. To know how to level the mountain. To know how to fill the valleys. Friend, there is no man. As long as you put on this flesh, those things exist. But when you get used to God's word, the life of God transforms. The light of God will translate to light that will bring you out of your darkness. From today, we are God's habitation. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Number three. Principle is be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. If you look at Daniel chapter 6 verse 8, verse 3. Daniel chapter 6 verse 3. Be filled with the Spirit. When Daniel removed all those stuff that would have taken him away from God, what he was filled with was the Spirit of God. That is why he could stand, he could stay with the king, commune with the king, and the wisdom at which Daniel was operating was too superb. He look at verse 3 of it. It said, Then this Daniel was preferred above this, the president and princes because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Ah! From today, your priesthood will relocate you. We reposition you. We take you to where you belong. I think one, maybe next Thursday, I will preach uh, from in prison from captivity to greatness. Or from denial to uh, glory. Something like that. But let me let you know. Remember, this man was a captive of war. But because he discovered himself and his priesthood early, he repositioned himself. And the things that would have imprisoned him, that would have been a means of limitation, he did not allow it. And when he did not allow it, he was equipped. The moment he was equipped, he was filled with that liberty. And at the right hand, there are pleasure forevermore. Amen. From today, the grace of the Almighty will make for what you represent. I didn't hear your amen. amen. The grace of the Almighty as a priest will be what I represent. Amen. And the third one is choosing the, the third uh, principle, the fourth principle is choosing for God's glory. Realize that you are choosing for God's glory. You are a peculiar person choosing for God's glory to the praise of his name. Choosing for God's glory. Choosing for God's glory. Daniel did not work for his own glory. Can you remember that? Hence, his priesthood was sustained. Chapter 1, chapter 2. Now, let's read this. Daniel chapter 2, verse 46 to 47. Daniel chapter 2, verse 46 to 47. I read. Let's read together. Nebuchadnezzar... Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet orders unto him. Verse 47, the last. He said, The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God is a God of gods and a Lord of, king, uh, a Lord of kings, a revealer of secrets, Seeing thou could reveal the secret. Hallelujah. Can you see the representation of Daniel? He represented God's glory. Don't think anything succeeded because of your effort. Own the glory to God. God may use you to pray, to declare about the thing. It happens. 
if it happens, don't see yourself. Now I have arrived. No, it's not by righteousness. It's not the works of righteousness. By works of righteousness is seen already. So Daniel didn't want to do the works of righteousness like, like King Saul. He brought Agai. He brought the best of sheep to offer as a sacrifice to God. Was that the demand of God? No. Just choose to obey him. Choose to celebrate his glory. Choose to live for his glory. Don't, don't play any role of being a, a power man, a superman. There's no superman here. Am I speaking? Amen. So how to develop our life as a priest? How to develop our life as a priest? Number one, like what happened in Daniel chapter 1. Seek God's purpose and call it. Daniel knew his purpose and knew his calling. He decided to he knew what to give up and what not to take in. So he was using everything he found himself with to seek God's purpose and call it upon his life. What happened to Peter? The same strength. Amen. Number two, develop spiritual gifts and abilities. He gave him to all that will make him to be approved of God and to build that strength of beauty. To make royal strength to release his, his beauty, his fragrance and incense. If, we, if you look at chapter 2, chapter 3, look at the fragrance he was just releasing. The glory he was just showing. Chapter 5, he, was, he served four kings. In chapter 5, the queen said, there is a man in this kingdom. Your father could not do away with. This other person could not do away with. So you can't do away with him. If you want to succeed, you call him. You have the key. And by the time Daniel came, Daniel demonstrated that power. So, seek God's purpose for your life. The day you know. If you look at it, though, the life Joseph was living was a means of seeking. Living by faith. Do you know what happened? God revealed to him what his plans were. And how did it happen? Did he get a special dream or vision? No. He just separated himself to live a covenant life. And that separated him and he became a priest. What happened to Samson? When Samson was religiously doing it, what happened to him? He messed up and he, he died with the sinners. Am I speaking? So your priesthood is not just meant to show up. You say, I attend church. I have this position. I have this fame. I have this car. I have this house. I have this no, those things are nothing. <laughs> Am I speaking, church? Those things are nothing. But it's simple to make what God has called you to represent to become your representation in life. That when people are defining you, they will define you as a servant of God. As someone that fully submits unto God. Am I speaking? How to develop our life as a priest. Number two, I said develop spiritual gifts and abilities. Number three, cultivate character and integrity. Cultivate a life of character and integrity. All of this is embedded in all that the priest represents. Let people see you in the day and in the night as God's own. Am I speaking? When things are good and when things are bad, remain for God. Amen. Number three, pursue intimacy with God. Or number four now, pursue intimacy with God. Pursue intimacy with God. Tell somebody pursue intimacy with God. Hallelujah. I think we've talked about this so much. You see how... Uh, how uh, Joseph was doing it. How Mordecai was doing it. 
down now the, Daniel, the way he was doing it, it was everything were around around God, his relationship with God. In chapter two, in chapter three, in chapter four, in chapter five, in chapter six, in chapter seven, in chapter eight, in chapter nine, that the things that are yet to be fulfilled we are revealed Hi. by reason of his search for God his close work with God his building pursuing intimacy with God and the fourth one is stand okay fifth one now sorry I will not be mentioning number now the next one is stand with courage and conviction be a man of courage. Be a man of conviction. Know what you stand to represent. Know the strength you are called to be. Be a man of courage and conviction. Look at situations and confront it with audacity. Because that is the strength of the constituent you belong. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. These men were not in their land though. They were not in their land. They were in a foreign land. And they were held captive by war. But because of their priesthood, they operate in the audacity of his glory. And they were number one in everything. Even when it was time, the king wanted to make Daniel the prefect. They cooked up things to make sure it does not happen. When people are looking at you, the way you are just rising, and they cook up things against you, they are making for your rising. Am I speaking? That's what happened. They helped Joseph to get to this place of fulfillment in life. They helped him. If they have not sponsored it, there is no way he would have been moved from Jacob's house to Egypt without payment. Am I speaking? It was early plan, earlier planned in Genesis chapter 15. And Joseph was found living that life and became the fulfillment of that strength. In 37, 39 and 40, 41 Genesis. So, the way you live your life now shows to us your life tomorrow. Am I speaking, church? Amen. So, walk in that beauty and the Lord is great to be found in you. Hallelujah. Now, the benefit of being a royal priest. Now, please, I understand what those things I just mentioned. A priest is not the one that will go and be burning oblation, I mean, uh, incense and, and carry castle and do this. No, 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 no. I'm just, that's why I have to do it the way I did it. Amen. Am I speaking? We are not just normal. We are not just ordinary. We are people of spiritual order. And strength. Am I speaking? We walk by inspiration that works in us. Anointing that teach all things. It will teach you all things. Am I speaking? As you live and walk in this life, may the direction of God may not elude you. The Lord said, I will guide you. I will instruct you. I will teach you the way to go. In Psalm 32 verse 8, He will guide you into secrets. You know, it, when you look at the Genesis chapter, I mean, Psalm 23, and the, David was saying, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He knew what he was saying. Because he's a priest of God, ordained for a purpose, the Lord was guiding through and through every second. Though men thought, David was foolish. Men thought he was mad. Men thought he was not courageous as he was before Goliath. He was running from cave to cave, from one place to the other. He was just escaping from one place to the other. And his son dealt with him. And yet he could not move it. He couldn't deal with him. It's not because he was not courageous. It's not because he was not audacious. It's not because he did not know where he was going to. It's because he knows that he's representing a strength that will make manifest the glory that belongs to God, not to himself. I'm not here to defend myself. You will defend God. What are the benefits? Number one authority 
spiritual authority and dominion. Authority and dominion. You just meant if you look at Daniel, he was just working on authority. He was just dominating. How? Spiritual authority. He was in charge. In chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, chapter five, chapter six. He was in charge. He was the spiritual. He was the one dictating to, to them what it is. The, the noble Chaldeans and wise men and magicians. They couldn't do anything. Why? When the royal priest orders a step or makes a statement, there's no other priest that have authority that can, I mean, that can utter it. Am I speaking? Amen. It takes one person to be a king over a kingdom. And if you are a royal priest over a kingdom, it takes you to be the one to determine all that happens there. From today, everywhere you walk, everywhere you go, whatsoever you do, he said, the source, where the soles of your feet tread upon, what will happen? You will have it as your possession. What happened? Peter threw the net to the right side. He threw the net. The fishes that were not there, the priest had order. The priest, the fish out to gather. I declare, whatsoever you order from today becomes the order. In the name of Jesus. So, spiritual authority, dominion over darkness. Look at it, it happened there. That Daniel chapter 2, dominion over darkness. Daniel chapter 6, dominion over darkness. The next one is, as a, as a believer that operates in real priest, as a real priest, we have authority to heal, authority to represent the supernatural. How? Daniel demonstrated that authority. In Daniel chapter 2, he went to the king. He told the king, I've seen your dream and the interpretation. With all boldness and clarity, he stated it. The king could not hold back himself. He felt that he said, indeed, the God you serve is the real God. The interpretation is true. The, the dream is true. Hey! From today, your war will not falter. I said, your war will not falter the ground of a field. Why? You are a priest. That's somebody I'm a priest. A royal priest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Under that authority and dominion, you have power to rule over demons and the wars of the wicked. Don't let any case, I mean, any uh, caricature of an object scare you. No. You are a priest. Am I speaking? Amen. Look at it. Daniel chapter 6. They all gang up. Look at it. Esther chapter 3, chapter 4. Chapter 5. Her man set up everything. Wanted to make sure that his power of darkness pushed to naught the things that Mordecai stood for. But those things he set up. I guess Mordecai became a miss for him. When David confronted Goliath, Goliath said, I, you came with Kadabot to come and fight me. And he calls David with his idol. David said, I didn't call him my own. I came in the name of the God whose idols, I mean, whose army you have you are defied. Some things are happening presently in some, world, in some places where there are challenges. Friend, there are some spiritual castration of things. Some people cannot just explain. The day your enemy will raise up issues against you, from that day you will start suffering it. They will say, ah, this person is not ordinary. I, I remember one time, I think this was 1988. Uh, amen. And something happened to me and I, it obstructed me a little bit. I was, I was doing some exams that time. It obstructed me. And I was going to do that exams. It's like food poison anyway. I removed the bottle from my mouth and something else. And of course, when I got back to some places, and the person was looking at me. I didn't even know. We were eating and talking. He said, some of you, 
you just say you, you serve Jesus, you serve God. Whereas there are some idols and powers you carry that, that is actually working for you. Not just the name of Jesus. He said, by the way, how come? Do you have power beside the one you just taught? I said, no, I don't have any other. He said, no. Where do you go to to equip yourself? I said, I don't go anywhere. I just, I just pray. I fast. I do this. I just told it endlessly. He said, eh. He said, that is how now they talk. And when I left, when she left, somehow, somehow, her only son was admitted in the hospital. And it was up, she was it was operated upon. This was November. And April the following year, she was also admitted in the hospital and operated upon. Those things that would have, I, my enemy would have suffered, they, they, now, they, now, they don't want to suffer it. Do you know what? Don't put down your head. When they range, when they fight, what you just do, let the priest hold in you be given effect and make what it is to make for that equipment you represent to function am I speaking do you know what nobody can kill you if you are fulfilling God's proposal that's I said before that's why Moses could not be killed because he was fulfilling a purpose that's why Mordecai could not be killed that's why Daniel could not be killed everything we are used to bring them to a quick end but that's where they're supposed to end became a means of promotion, a means of taking them to the next level. I declare this. Every obstruction your path that would have challenged your priesthood, may the Lord use this as a means to take you to your next level. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Number two benefit is divine provision. If you look at Daniel chapter 2, we have read the first 46 to 48. When Daniel had interpreted and the king acknowledged that it's God that did this for Daniel, Daniel was promoted and he was given plenty things. So enough provision. What happened? When Peter and John could not produce any silver, the provision of the supernatural became what they used to bear the, there was a time they were asking Jesus to pay tax and they came to his disciples, the disciples went to Jesus Jesus said okay go and catch the fish, the first fish you catch, take the coin out of his mouth and you will get it, the provision came in abundance, look at Egypt I mean, they look at Israel now, they suffer in Egypt, when God was releasing them at the appointed time, they paid back every coin. They owned them. They spoiled Egypt until they became spoiled. I declare, what they do to Shitayalabaya, every provision we ever need in life, whatever position you have been denied of, I declare you will get it now. As you walk in your priesthood, as you walk in the authority of the provision of God, the law will make you to arrive quickly. In the name of Jesus. If you look at the divine provision, the widow of uh, Zarephi, I mean, Sonamite woman enjoyed, Zarephite woman enjoyed. Look at, look at it. Can you compare what they give with what they received? Eh? Amen. Amen. That is the benefit of being a priest. And under that, the Lord supplies all our need according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. As a priest is the Lord that takes care of you. And when he's taking care of you, it makes the blessing to come in abundance. For instance, if the Lord decides to give you small rain, uh, no matter how much, if you have something to save it, no matter how much man gives to you, the one, the one, the small one God gives to you will be much more than that one man gave. Am I speaking? Look at what happened now. If Daniel had allowed what Nebuchadnezzar gave to him in chapter 2, in chapter 3, 
in chapter 4 he would have been overtaken by pride to interpret correctly to tell the king that he will be found a missed animal if he does not take care of his pride and chapter 5 wouldn't have appeared look at it the, the definition of Daniel was such in a tremendous way abundantly it was a blessing chapter 6 it was a blessing chapter 9 we were told that Daniel cried before the Lord Jeremiah told us after 70 years there will be a revisor. Lord, what is happening? And the Lord visited. I declare no matter the delay, you will not be denied. The abundance God had promised you, the Lord will make it to come in the name of Jesus. And under that divine provision, there is protection from harm. Look at what happened in chapter 3. Chapter 6. The very fullness, they were secured from it. That's divine provision. Chapter 6. Daniel was protected against a starved lion. But the enemies were used to satisfy the lion. I'm declaring everyone that want to sponsor your destruction in the name above all names in the name above all names that will become a means of their destruction in the name of Jesus the Lord protect from him. and lastly on that divine provision he guides and he grants wisdom he grants guidance and wisdom look at when Daniel in chapter 2 he went to pray in verse 18. He prayed and the Lord guided Daniel. Amen. You know, miss your way. Actually, that's why you're a royal priest. A royal priest is a royal priest. Tell yourself, I'm a royal priest. When Jesus told Peter, throw the nest, a royal priest have ordered the steps from today. In your closest when you pray, take charge in the physical. Am I speaking? A priest have declared it. He said, when a king speaks, there is power. Amen. A royal priesthood, a choosing generation, peculiar. I'm a peculiar person. So that's why we must manifest. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number three. Number one, I said authority and dominion. Number two, divine provision. Number three, internal inheritance. As we as Christians, we have internal just not the land, but internal inheritance. How? In Romans chapter 8, verse 17, we are co heirs with Christ. That's number one. We are co heirs with Christ. Number two, we are joint heirs of God's kingdom. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 29, we are joint as a priest, we are joint heirs of God's kingdom. Joint heirs of God's kingdom. Number three, Eternal life is what we live for, not the land flowing with milk and honey. So, if you're in the midst of flowing with milk and honey and you are overtaken by that, that may deprive you to end up there. But what we are walking and living a life for is eternity. Tell somebody I'm living for eternity. I am living for eternity. And the last point there is inheritance of the saints. Acts chapter 20 verse 32. Internal inheritance is every one of us, we are sure we inherit heaven. And under benefit, number four, is intimacy with God. If you look at Daniel, the way he went to God, friendship with God. Daniel chapter 2, when they couldn't tell the dream and all that, Daniel just went and they prayed and the Lord told them familiarity with God's voice when the Lord spoke to them they were very certain 
So a real priest is very certain of God's word. My sheep hear my voice and they all know it. Amen. Amen. Number three, under that intimacy is access to God's presence. Very easy. Look at what, they, what happened. They just went in the vision in the night. They prayed and the Lord opened it up in the visions of the night. And the, number, the next one is communion with God, under intimacy with God. Their communion with God was, was authentic, was clear. And number five is, number five benefit, transformed life. Tell somebody transformed life. Hello, you agree with me? Daniel, life was transformed. The moment he refused to be defied. Is it true? Do you see what happened in chapter 3? Or in chapter 2? See the way the supernatural became the order of his life. That's what a priest is supposed to represent. So, a life is transformed. That means transformed life is by renewal of your life. Look at Daniel who was renewed. He, did, he, he was ten times better than the rest. Am I speaking? Amen. And under that transformation, it, it, it conformed to God's image. Was what I was taking, defying from God. So we as Christians, we are to conform to Christ's image. Romans chapter 8 verse 29. We are to conform to Christ's image. And the last one there is when we are conformed to Christ's image, we have a glorified body. We'll read this. Philippians chapter 3, verse 21. To live is Christ. To die is gain. Who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned? Okay, I was quoting chapter 1, verse 21. Now, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto him. What happened in chapter 3? Daniel chapter 3? Was he able to subdue the very fullness? Eh? That's the body. Nothing could the very fullness consume the strong man. But these men, these three men, they walked in the midst of fire. They were not consumed, even to their courts. What was consumed was the foreign things around them. Do you know what? The fire of this world will make you come out better. I didn't hear your amen. Look at it. The fire of the world was what made Mordecai to get to the throne was what made Daniel to get to the throne, was what made Joseph to get to the throne, was what made a revelation of roots.